with Frankie Benelli of Quiet Riot. Okay, so I've now tried the uh, the cantaloupe Kit Kat <laughs> and some sort of tea, and I got to tell you, they're really good. Glad you're enjoying they're really, them. I really appreciate this. They are really good, and I can't wait to bring these some of these home to my kids because they. I was just telling you off air. I'm I'm taking my family. We're going to Switzerland for a little family vacation in, in a couple of weeks. And my son's 12. He's never been out of the country, really. So wow. he just got his first passport. He's so excited. And he's big into looking at maps and things like that. So he's all about Switzerland or anything international right now. So to bring Japanese Kit Kats home, they are going to be like. Well, make sure you take them. There's there's the um, old section of town. There's In Zurich, we're going. Yeah, yeah and it's, there's tons of of things to see there and then right adjacent to it you go down this little street and it's just shopping galore with oh, unbelievable well, bring the but, credit card but with unbelievably great prices but everyone says zurich is one of the most expensive cities in the world that not that on. street oh i gotta find that street then, not Frankie. That street. and they want to go to this country that's the smallest country in the world as uh, Liechtenstein. yeah Liechtenstein. we're going there to start because <laughs> they just want to go to the country because it's so small don't anyway. blink <laughs> Frankie Benali is here. Let's get a couple quick calls for Frankie before we have to wrap up. We could go hours here, and hopefully we'll do another round uh, when, when Frankie's schedule permits, and I'm back out here. But let's say hello real quickly to uh, let's say hello to Ricky in Maryland. Go ahead, Ricky. You're on with Frankie. Hey, Eddie. Thanks for letting me uh, get in here. Uh, Frankie, brother, I love you, man. And all the best wishes to you, your wife, Regina, your daughter, um, I've got a signed copy of your DVD here. I watch it, dude, all the time. I enjoy it just as much every time. Um, and I've seen you a whole bunch over the years with uh, all the good lineups, man. You know what I mean? And and just all the best wishes to you. And uh, I hope you beat the shit out of that crap, man. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let me let me let you know that that personally, I really appreciate your support. It means a lot to me, and it gives me uh, additional strength to continue this fight. Thank you, Ricky, for the call. This is Joe in Louisiana. Hey, Joe. Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm gonna let Frankie know. I he's in my prayers every night, along with his family. I kind of know what he's going through. I'm a little dumbfounded because I'm actually talking to Frankie Benali, one of my favorite all-time guys in the band. And, shit. <laughs> and I got through to you Monday night, and you gave me grief about Def Leppard, if you remember that. I gave you grief about Def Leppard? Yeah, you you, you cut me up because I waited 30 <laughs> years to see him. Oh, I was busting Never your balls because you had said you... You said he, he said he yeah. waited 30 years to see Def Leppard. I said they've been around since 1980. How'd you wait 30 years? I, uh, Joe, to, I have, Joe told me he was like 55. I go, Where, how'd you miss the boat 35 years ago? Don't feel bad. I've only it's seen him once, and that was... I've only seen him once, and that was 1983 at the Dortmund uh, Pop Rock Festival. Uh, it's the first and last time I saw them. They were really good. <laughs> Joe, thank you. I'm just moving quickly because we want to get as many people in as we have uh, so we can because I have to end right on time, of course. This is Al, who's in Jersey. Hey, Al, go ahead. Hey, Eddie, thank you, man. Hey, Frankie, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I've seen you many times over the years. Um, I just want to say that this world is not ready for you to leave it yet. If anybody can beat the odds, you can. You've uh, hurdled over many hurdles, and you got the strength, brother, man. All right? We need you uh, to stay around for a long time, all right? That's all I really wanted to say, man. I love you, bro. And, uh, you know, fight the good fight, my friend. Well, with your support, I intend to be around uh, as long as I possibly can and uh, continue to entertain you with my loud drumming. <laughs> There you go. Thank you, Al. We're holding you to that, Frankie. We're absolutely <laughs> holding you to that. Uh, this is Dell, who's in Pittsburgh. Hi, Dell. You're on with Frankie Benali. Hi. What's up, guys? Hi. Um, so I got a question for you guys, and it was, what's your favorite uh, band that either opened up for you or you opened up for? Uh, it's good to see you're going strong. Um, yeah, first time caller and i'm 15 year old 15 years old big rockhead 
Wow, well, new, the next the next wave, the future yep. generation, Dell in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. So, Dell, Del, thank you, Dell, for the call. So, the question is, your favorite band you ever opened for, or that opened for you? Well, I got to be honest with you. We were fortunate enough. Quiet Ride was fortunate enough in 1983 um, to support uh, some of my favorite bands: Scorpions, um, uh, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, ZZ Top. Black Sabbath, it goes on and on. And, and I can tell you that across the board, um, all those bands treated us with, with a, a great level of respect and we never had any problems. And they were all great every single night. When we had, in 1984, we had Whitesnake open up for us. You know, that was like the dream version of Whitesnake with John Sykes on guitar and oh, especially yeah. uh, Cozy Powell on drums. And I got to become friends with Cozy. Uh, and that was a drum lesson every night. So... In that regard, I have no regrets or no issues with any of the bands that we supported or any of the bands that supported Choir Ride. We've been very fortunate. This is uh, Raymond, who's in California. Hi, Raymond. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Real quickly, um, I know you had done a lot of uh, drum work with Wasp. Why is it that you never actually uh, joined the band? Well, the whole thing with Was started in uh, in '89. Blackie was looking for a permanent drummer, and I was busy with Choir Ride. We were working, um, actually, this is '87, '88. We're working on the fourth Choir Ride album, and I said to Blackie, "I can't join the band, but if you want me to do the record, I will." And so I did the Headless Children record, which is my favorite of the I think eight I've played, eight or nine I've played uh, with Was. As it turned out, when I was in Tokyo. Um, in 89, um, I decided that I wanted to put Choir Ride on hold for a while because it simply wasn't working with that particular lineup. And Blackie, I don't know how he found out about it, but I got a call from him and he says, uh, uh, stay in Tokyo for another week, do press for the Headless Children, fly to London, and we'll start pre-production rehearsals the following week in London. And I did the world tour for Headless Children. But Blackie and I are really, really good friends. You know, we've, we've had, you know, like, like, any brother, um, you know, we've had issues in the past that have all been put to rest long ago. Uh, but he's great. I just was never a permanent um, uh, touring part of the band. So we got about 90 seconds before I have to end. Uh, anything that you want to say to the fans or on the air before we have to wrap up? Anything you want to mention? Yeah, please know that, you know, the volume of, of messages that I've received uh, across the board has been um amazing for me. I have read them all. Um, I apologize for not being able to respond to each and every single one because there's just not enough hours in the day. Um, And I continue with my therapy both in and out of uh, hospitals and private clinics. Uh,